All right, guys. It is another gray, gloomy. Imagine that a gray, gloomy, yuck day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Somehow, where are we? I am losing track through all the doom and gloom. It is Wednesday. October 6, 2021, and good Lord, trying to figure out what to make the chronicle of the collapse. I was going the easy route. The number one story on the planet today, not confirmed yet, but uh, the number one story that it appears that what set off this latest environmental catastrophe this oil spill out there in Southern California was one of those cargo ships, you know, that are backed up for four weeks now. They're saying, last kind of heard there were 73 of these things, and I guess an anchor or something off of. Um, anyway, there was some sort of ship collision with that oil pipeline. I, I remember the, 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 the moment I heard about that, oil spill, the first thing in my mind was wouldn't it be hilarious if uh, that oil spill uh, was due to one of those giant cargo ships. Uh, well, it's not so funny, guys. Uh, you, you know, this is just the latest example of how this snowball, all of these dots connecting. You, you know, you try... You, you, you try to diagram this out, and, and here we go, jumping the shark from uh, these supply chain crunches to environmental catastrophes. This can all, on one level, get traced back to the corona panic. Uh, in a good Lord. So uh, I was just going to take the easy route, but I'm quite sure that everybody uh, from the Duma sphere to the rumor sphere and everything in between is covering this story. So uh, while I was going through the Rolodex of doom and gloom, this story out of the New Yorker, this long, I mean, book-length story uh, popped up you know, just buried down in there, uh, you know, way below all of these stories about this supposed, I think that now they're calling it 140,000 gallons of oil. It's this story from the New Yorker where they finally done this long investigation of. It's an excellent read uh, about the I've, I've been talking about this story, I am pretty sure, for at least three years. And uh, th this story has been sitting out there for decades. And this is the New, York, the New Yorker telling the whole story. The ship that became a bomb stranded in Yemen's war zone a decaying super tanker has more than one million barrels of oil aboard. If or when, there's no uh, if left, when it explodes or sinks, thousands may die, which is the least of the concern. So anyway, I, I didn't know how... Uh, I, I was going to encapsulate the, this, this book-length story. Good Lord. Um, and, you know, and bring it down into a ADD uh, audience. But I'm glad to say that uh, someone over at, where is it? Good old business insider that... Uh, Azmi Harun from Business Insider uh, has done my job for me <clears throat> and distilled the whole story. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link to the New Yorker story where you can hear the whole five-part harmony, the full orchestra, the history, the politics, all of that. 
um, talking about all of this dot connecting, but let's let Business Insider distill this for us, <clears throat> and then maybe I'll have some comments at the end of it. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, take it away, Osmi Harun. <clears throat> a massive defunct oil tanker off of Yemen's coastline could sink or explode any day, <clears throat> costing the shipping industry billions and leaving millions of Yemenis. Is it Yemenis or Yemenis in harm's way? That is quite the headline there. Okay. <clears throat> One of the largest oil tankers in the world is dead off of Yemen's coast and could sink any day, which is the same uh, story for years, if not decades. We have had years if not decades, to go out there and fix this and get that oil off of this ship. Absolutely. Anyway, let me read the story, then I'll come back with my rant. <clears throat> An ailing, powerless oil tanker stationed off of Yemen's coast could explode or sink any day. Yes. Uh endangering the lives of at least 8 million Yemenis, cause an environmental catastrophe, and cost the shipping industry billions of dollars, according to a report from the New Yorker. As I've mentioned before, you've got to love the name of this. The name of this ship is the FSO Safer, S-A-F-E-R, and uh, before you get an uh, ironic uh, laugh out of that, the New Yorker uh, explained that despite its ironic name, the Safer, it's actually the Safer. It's uh, the Arab word spelled Safer is pronounced Safer, and it's actually named after the oil field where all of this million barrels of oil and don't know if it was mentioned here. Uh, according to the New Yorker, they, they pointed out that the Exxon Valdez spill was about 250,000 barrels of oil. So we're talking about a completely preventable uh, environmental catastrophe four times the size of the Exxon Valdez spill and probably, good lord, a thousand times as big as this uh, oil spill. I'm just taking a wild guess, a thousand times as big as this oil spill uh, out there in California. The FSO Safer an ultra-large crude oil tanker stationed near Yemen's Hodaya port and owned by the Yemeni Safar Exploration and Production Operations Company has been dead since 2017, meaning that its steam boilers have been have given out. So been for four years, this uh, derelict oil tanker sitting off the coast of Yemen. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Safar is reportedly too big for the Suez Canal and nearly too large for the English Channel. According to the report in the New Yorker, the vessel was built in 1976 and it is one of the largest oil tankers in existence with more than a million barrels of oil on board. The New Yorker's Ed Caesar reported uh, that ships don't often cross oil spill waters. Quoting the New Yorker, a spill from the Saffir could take months to clear 
imposing a toll of tens of billions of dollars on the shipping business and the industries it services. Um, the one, one of these analyses estimated that the cleanup alone could cost $20 billion. The New Yorker report notes that in the quote, worst forecast, the oil spill from the Saffir could reach the Babel Mondeb Strait, where in terms of cargo, about 10% of the world's trade passes each year. So you love this. So in California, we have the global trade starting a, uh, an oil spill, and now we see an oil spill stopping uh, the 10% of the global trade. You, you, you've got to appreciate the twisted irony. You know, if you lose your sense of ironic black humor here, uh, you, you're, you're going to end up like Michael Rupert. Um, okay. This is from the U.S. Energy Information uh, Administration, which notes that the strait is an important route, route for, take a wild guess, oil and natural gas shipments. All right. According to the U.S. Energy Information in Administration, quote, Closure of the strait could keep tankers originating in the Persian Gulf from, trans from transiting the Suez Canal or reaching this uh, big pipeline, forcing them to divert around the southern tip of Africa. Uh, in 2018, an estimated 6.2 million barrels per day of crude oil, condensate, and refined petroleum products flowed through the strait toward Europe, the United States, and Asia, close quote. So uh, if you think the price of gas is bad today, the, the, the chain of events that this completely preventable environmental catastrophe uh, it, it, it is, not when, is going to set off. Well, uh, it, it, this is some great doomsday prophecy here. This is some really tough doomsday prophecy. The company that owns Saffir reportedly only has enough money to make minor repairs on the ship annually, and the Houthi rebels who now control the oil fields near where the ship is stationed have obstructed any efforts by the United Nations or NGOs to dislodge or drain the boat. Uh, do I go into my rant now? No, I'm going to come back to this uh, sentence about how the Houthi rebels who control the oil fields have, ex have obstructed any efforts by the United Nations or environmental organizations to dislodge or drain the boat. Okay. Now let me wrap up this story and we'll come back to this. Aboard a skeleton crew, there's seven people left on this, a skeleton crew of seven men is fighting desperately to prevent the ship from sinking, exploding, or causing a massive oil spill. All scenarios that would have devastating consequences for Yemenis already engulfed in a humanitarian crisis. Just to add more dots to this, if the ship sinks and the oil is spilled, the air would be polluted for at least 8 million Yemenis, according to the report. The vessel's former chief engineer said that the ship, quote, moves forward 
each day towards the worst, close quote, and as tens of thousands of you know, people in Yemen struggle with famine and millions lack access to basic goods with the ongoing war, a spill could block the port of Hodaya, which is where two-thirds of Yemen's food arrives, according to the report. The report added that Yemen's Red Sea fishing industry would be completely decimated with the saffir sinking and spilling, and the UN, quote, has no contingency plan to accommodate a shutdown of the Hodaida Straits. And there you go. So, uh, as I say, I have been reporting on this, I guess since 2017, you know, when uh, when they started sounding the alarm. Uh, anyway, I just want to uh, touch on this. Now, of, of course, the, uh, the New Yorker goes a lot more in depth in, 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 into the politics behind this. Uh, let, let's just as a segue, uh, let's see, the company that owns Safford reportedly only has enough money to make minor repairs on the ship annually, and Houthi rebels who control the Marib oil fields near where the ship is stationed have obstructed any efforts by the United Nations or NGOs to dislodge or drain the boat. Okay, guys, it, 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 is it just me? So essentially what they're saying is, what, what this is, is, is some sort of political red tape. Okay, there's some sort of, I'm not going to break it all down. As somebody told me yesterday, it is very tiresome to listen to people such as me who don't know what the hell they're talking about, uh, you know, talking about geopolitical uh, issues. I am not going uh, to sit here and make comments about the political issues in Yemen, whose fault it is, uh, is it Western imperialism, uh, is it uh, the Easter Bunny on a bad acid trip. Uh, who cares? It, it, it does not matter at this point. The bottom line here, guys, is that a handful, and, and when I say a handful, my guess is it, it is literally, a, a, you know, probably less than 100 people, for whatever reason, are, are obstructing any efforts for anybody to come in there and, and drain one million barrels of oil off that ship. Four damn years, uh, that thing uh, ha has been a ticking time bomb every day. Uh, it, it, this is a no-shit Sherlock that we are looking at an environmental disaster, and we're and the rest of this planet is, is letting. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't give a damn uh, whether uh, you know whether I'm on the side uh, of whoever the hell the Houthis are. Uh, I don't know who the Houthis are. I don't give a damn who the Houthis are. I don't care if the Houthis uh, are, are correct in blaming it on the uh, on whoever. Uh, you know what I'm saying. The fact is, guys, that there is one million barrels of oil getting ready to uh, you know to go off uh, into the ocean and, and unleash an environmental catastrophe 
photography four times the size uh, of the uh, Exxon Valdez and in and, and a planet of eight billion people the United Nations all of these environmental organizations uh, saying guys we need to deal with this and, and, and we're sitting here letting uh, a, a, a few uh, politicians whether they be rebels whatever this is am I, am I the only one on the planet saying these uh, you know go in there and and, and 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 start draining that ship what the hell are these little uh, Yemeni Houthis gonna do about it you know, at some point, the rest of the damn planet just needs to say, you know, we've had enough of this crap. What are they going to do about it? Get your ass over there now and start draining that uh, start draining that million barrels of oil and, and, and get it the hell out of there. You know, this little political bickering, you know, the United Nations with, with all of their grim, uh, disastrous reports, the United Nations damn well uh, has the power to, to go in there and slap these little, uh, these little gnats down, slap them down. You know, well, what the hell are they going to do? Uh, it, it's uh, it, <laughs> it, it, you see this over and over again. Uh, you see it over there in the cove uh, in Japan with that you know with that, uh, that dolphin slaughter every year. Uh, you know who was it? Someone like Paul Watson or somebody from Sea Shepherd saying, y y you know, guys, if the rest of the planet cannot. Uh, stop uh, like over there in Japan it's like six or seven people responsible uh, for that evil dolphin slaughter that that if a planet of eight billion people can't come together enough to say this is wrong this shit has to stop and do whatever it takes to stop it slap the little gnats down you know, and of course, you know, you could jump forward to the Amazon rainforest. Uh, all of this crap, uh, you know, Bozo Nero claiming it's none of the planet's business uh, what he does down there uh, in the Amazon. Bullshit. Bullshit. You know, we, we could we could put up uh, instead of building a wall uh, across the southern U.S., we need to build a wall uh, around the damn Amazon rainforest while we still can. Although we missed the call on that, I, I just don't get this crap. You know, this is when uh, I am 100% uh, in favor of global governance. This is when I bring on the new world order. Uh, and, and say enough of this crap. But of course, the New World Order is 100% uh, dependent on the fossil fuels and global trade and, and, and all of this. Uh, they're a bunch of pussies. And, and meanwhile, anybody with a brain who knows that, uh, that, that this shit could stop tomorrow, we, we could have, uh, we could be draining that boat tomorrow. And we're, and we're just going to sit back and, and watch one million barrels of oil uh, pour in uh, to that ocean while we all, who's to blame? Uh, are, well, are the Houthis right? You know, who gives a damn if the Houthis are right or wrong? They're wrong on this one. 
and, and, uh, and the whole damn planet is going to suffer for this. And, and those dolphins over there in Japan are going to keep on getting butchered every year. Those whatever they were, uh, dolphins up there in the Faroe Islands, they're going to keep on getting butchered every year. But because we're a planet of pussies. And excuse me if I'm starting to sound like somebody else out here in the Doomosphere on Collapse Chronicles, but I, I've just had enough of this crap. I really have. And, 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 and I know I'm not alone here. Can I get an amen that we go over to Yemen and, and squash those little maggots? Anyway... The dog thinks I'm getting overwrought, but uh, I have to wrap up this uh, this rant, and uh, we got to go dig some holes, little dog, to get back to being an Airbnb super host. <laughs> get out there and drain uh, a million barrels of oil while you still can. Bye, guys.